Okay, this sermon is entitled, Lordship Salvation, a.k.a. We Don't Need Jesus. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 17 reads, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer, that goeth not out of feigned lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that thy mouth shall not transgress. Now, lordship salvation, also known as lordship damnation, is a false doctrine that is not a small problem in Christendom. It's an ever-burgeoning religious disease. It's this idea that a person has to make Christ the Lord of their life, be acquiescent to his commandments, and pay obeisance to God and make him your Lord, not just your Savior. They say you have to make Christ your Lord and Savior. They, these stupid false prophets will say things like, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. And this is a false doctrine straight out of hell. It saves absolutely nobody. And their main key proof text is Luke chapter 6. So let's go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 6. In verse 46 it reads, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Now what these false prophets do is they try to say that you're calling Christ Lord, but you're not obeying him. You're not doing what he says. Well, the problem with this is that he's just showing these religious people, like the Pharisees and whatnot, or whoever, that they're just hypocrites. They call him Lord, but they're not obeying him. That's because nobody obeys Jesus perfectly. And see, this verse does not apply to the free gracers at all, because we're not calling Jesus Christ Lord. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, those people were calling him Lord in vain, because such people were trusting in their works. Okay, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Calling Jesus Christ Lord does not save you. Trusting that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and then rose again, and then that alone is your, your sufficient payment, you know, that gets you into heaven, that's what saves. Just simply believing on Christ is what saves. So, in essence, lordship salvation is basically just another way of implying that we don't need Christ. We can make him the Lord of our life. We can obey him. We can turn from all our sins and live a holy life. We don't need Jesus. Turn over to Galatians chapter 2. Now, the reason why I'm preaching so many sermons on this is because this problem never dies. This false doctrine won't go away. It's just proliferating. It's, it's, it's increasing. And that's why more sermons are, are needed for, on this subject. In Galatians chapter 2, we see an example of people that were trying to be saved or justified by the law. And th this verse makes it clear that they don't need Christ, or at least they think they don't need him. It reads in verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. You either have Christ as your Savior, who paid for all your sins, or he, he died in vain. Now turn back to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, it reads in verse 7, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. What this is saying is that Jesus Christ did not die for righteous people. Righteous people would not need a savior. And these lordshippers don't believe they need a savior. They're not trusting in Jesus to save them. They're going to split hell wide open someday. And the reason why is because you can't be saved by what you do. Now, a lot of these false prophets, a lot of these, you know, benighted fools, you could call them, that are believing and teaching this garbage, they actually think God is proud of them. Like, they're going to make a difference in, in his eyes. And that how they live is going to, like, court favor with God. It's not going to happen. Jesus Christ died for the ungodly, not people that are pretending to be godly. Okay, these masqueraders, these bearers of false witness, these liars, these self-righteous haughty people, it's not going to fly, okay? Pride is the one thing that gets you sent to hell. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. They're just bragging about all the things they did. And the, the conclusion of the matter is, is that they go down unjustified. Luke chapter 18, the Pharisees and, and all these work trusters, they go down unjustified, they stay lost, and Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Okay, Everyone who believes in lordship salvation, if that's what you've always embraced, soteriologically, you're going to hear the words, I never knew you. You're a worker of iniquity. It's because you didn't have your sins paid for. 
You tried another way. You tried to get into heaven through some other means, and it's not going to fly. It's not going to work. So we need to watch out for this disease. Lordship salvation is simply this. We don't need Christ. We don't need Jesus. That's all it is. That's all it ever was. That's all it ever will be. Okay, but true salvation is found in trusting Jesus Christ alone, putting all your faith in what he did alone, understanding that it's the blood of Jesus that washes all your sins away, and that once you're saved, you're eternally secure, and it's simply by faith alone in Christ alone. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. It's not he that obeyeth the Son. It's not he that is good and obeys the commandments and repents of all his sins. It's he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.